Good evening. I'm Pankaj Modi. I'm a conservation architect and I am part of INTAC, which is an NGO working in heritage conservation. I am, uh, I'm also a South Zone coordinator for ECOMOS, which is a scientific body of conservation professionals who also is an advisory to UNESCO. And I've been working for the last 18 years on conservation related projects, whether it's built restoration or planning of historical areas and so on. So uh, basically, I'm here to discuss with you all on the revised master plan that has now come up and they're looking at feedback. Uh, so what is this RMP and where does heritage fit in a master plan is basically the discussion that we need to look at and address this issue. Uh, so before we really get into the master plan exercise, uh, let's understand what is heritage and what is heritage in Bangalore city. So when we look at Bangalore city and it's, uh, we talk about the, the major icons like Vidhan Sauda and High Court and Tipu's Palace and Fort. So is that the only heritage? So let's start with this question, what's heritage in Bangalore? And for that, let's look at how Bangalore city has grown and developed and evolved over the last 480 years. So over the 480 years, there have been various contributions to the development of Bangalore, starting from Kempe Gowda's Peta area, which was planned by him as a trading city. Then we had the Wadiyas who came in, we had Shivaji's father who came in, we had Tipu Sultan who came in, the British came in and established the cantonment here. And then newer areas developed post that, Baswangudi, Maleshwaram, and each of them had their own identity. Each of them had their own planning principles. Now, this is what really makes the city interesting and unique, that the different areas got or different layers of history have got added on to this place. And as we move from one area to the other area, we can experience this. And this came about just not from planning. It is from the people, from the activities that they were doing. You take the Peta area where economic activities were happening. You have the Karga festival, you come out from here towards Bull Temple, you have the Kadlekai Parishay, you go to uh, Fraser Town, you have the uh, Mosque Road and the MM Road. Uh, so, so different areas developed because of the kind of culture over there, the people over there, the lifestyles, the activities that they were doing. Uh, take Shivaji Nagar, for example, the Russell Market and St. Mary's Basilica. So each of these places had their own character and that's what makes it an interesting city because you can experience this even today. If I'm in an area of Avenue Road and Chick Pet and RT Street, we have a 480 years old layer of history. We go to Gavipuram, we have the cave temple, we have the hillocks over there, we have the water bodies over there, we have the old communities who are still like having their activities over there, move to Old temple, you still have this Kadlika Parishet being celebrated every year. So various parts of the city have to be recognized in this uniqueness and the identity of the city. What contributes to the uniqueness and the identity of the city is what we can consider as the heritage of the city. So be it the festivals, be it the culture, be it the communities, be it the water bodies, be it the towers of Kempe Gaura that were built, be it the planning, be it the topography, because topography was one of the major reasons of how the city has evolved, you know, where Peta was established and how the lake system got developed. And then we have the rock formations in uh, Lalba, which is considered to be the oldest. So we have to recognize the natural heritage that we have. We have the uh, built heritage by the people and we have the cultural heritage. All these come together to give the uniqueness and the identity to the city. So that is what we first need to recognize. Heritage is not just limited as we all largely know that whatever is protected by Archaeological Survey of India or any other archaeology department. For that matter, in Bangalore, we only have about seven protected monuments two which are protected by Archaeological Survey of India. You have the Fort and the Tipu's Palace. And there are five which are protected by the State Department of Archaeology. Largely, none of the other places are protected. So in a way, Bangalore is having a lot of unprotected heritage. So it's totally vulnerable to the development process. 
you lose the character of the city you lose the buildings in the process the experience or the uniqueness of the city and this is where it becomes important for us that there are local tools which can protect the unprotected heritage and when we mean protected it's not like we need to preserve these things they are not monuments per se which needs to be preserved but they lend a character to the city so how do we kind of developing them or evolving them and there are some very good examples right in the city of how they have been replanned whether you take the whole uh, road the boulevard or you take the freedom park which was converted from the central jail related well back into the city's culture city's lifestyle and that is the one way of conserving our heritage so can these examples extend into something larger at a policy level where we can protect or kind of develop these heritage areas more sensitively and that is where i see the role of master plans which can act to some extent it's not that only master plan is a tool to conserve our heritage but that's one of the ways in which uh, we can conserve the heritage so we need to look at these master plans and how they can kind of retain the character and develop it in a sensitive way so that you don't have um, everything lost the uniqueness of the city that gets lost if let's talk about something that this uh, master plan 2031 has really achieved and this is the first time we see that they are addressing heritage in a master plan in bangalore and you have the heritage zones which have come up so largely it would be normally only buildings but here for the first time we have zones zones with of similar characters which have been identified so that's a good step i mean i would look at these as a beginning that has been made but we need to look at it more comprehensively because uh, in this master plan when we start looking at <coughs> the uh, zones only the buildings in those have been identified some of the historical buildings that are there and they have been identified so the question also comes is how do you identify heritage what do you consider of heritage generally a uh, lot of thought has been that anything that is above 100 years so that's a very archaic way of thinking i mean it, it used to be the way archaeological survey of india initially used to identify some buildings so that they can take a stock of what to protect because there's so much of heritage but that's not the only way to give a heritage status to a building so the heritage status can be given technically what we do in a process called listing is define certain values to these buildings now some of these buildings may have uh, age value or historical value some of them may have a architectural value because their character is very interesting sometimes a building is associated to certain personality it becomes valuable for that like in gavipuram you have masti venkatesh ayer's house ayer's house and that becomes that makes it very important because he's a gampit award winner and that's associated to him so we have these kind of in, uh, association values to it you have the water bodies which sustain the city the lake system that is there that needs to be considered as a yeah, environmental and ecological value the parks of bangalore look at kabar park lal bag they are just not open spaces they go beyond just being open spaces so there is a whole diversity of the heritage values which are can be assigned and which can help in defining what is of heritage and what lends character to the city and to the work sustainability of the city once that is done we can actually try to see how to kind of protect these places so coming back to the zones that we are looking at I and mean, it's just not the building it's the character of these zones you drive through the whole kaban park area or mg road area or around vidhan sauda there is certain character so even the new buildings that come in should contribute to the character that they should be in harmony with these buildings can the master plan give guidelines to what this new developments that will come up in these areas it is one thing to consider that these are buildings of value and we need to kind of conserve them and secondly we have to see how the new development that comes up over there will be in harmony with what is existing over there the character 
then we need to also look at other sectors which are part of these things which can put pressure on these places transportation infrastructure all these we have to look at all this in an integrated way you can't identify a zone for example you've done peta zone in the revised master plan and just say that there are five buildings to be protected or 10 buildings to be protected there is a whole character which is there there are temples over there there are open spaces which are related to the culture and the activities of the people over there there are trees over there sacred trees which are there so most of these have to be recognized and then what kind of commercial activities are allowed around that so the land use that you look at the transportation if that's putting a pressure that you have to widen the road but if that's at the loss of the heritage then we have to reboot the relook at the transportation plan the infrastructure that comes up in these areas so it has to be a very integrated way of looking at each of these zones a multidisciplinary approach is required to conserve any city's historical areas and that's how we should be approaching these but as i said this is a beginning they have recognized it and we have the different 12 zones that have been identified and 500 odd buildings but they are not very comprehensive however there is a mention in the master plan that there will be a heritage committee that will be set up now it will be the role of this committee to look at how this listing or identification of heritage becomes more comprehensive how can it be better managed in a more multidisciplinary way and for that i would even advise that the bd and bbmp has a technical cell which supports this particular heritage committee in advising them all these uh, zone wise regulations and zone wise planning they can have zonal plans for each of these heritage zones that have been identified we can look into it in more detailed way so these are some of the things that we can do through the master plan unfortunately lakes have not been recognized it's good that lakes are being protected in a different way but not recognized as heritage the other uh, issue which i found in the present master plan is that, that they don't look at the whole setting in the sense if i give you an example of haryana gutta temple or the gavi ganga issue at temple it is the entire hillock with the temple which becomes an important feature so one needs to recognize those open spaces which are associated with the temple where the activities of the temple spread out needs to be recognized in cases of parks like lal bagh and kavan park buildings have been identified but the park as a whole was planned is it's a planned park like in kavan park you had different streets which different roads which were lined up with different species of trees and there's a definite planning principles which are applied to the setting of these parks so one needs to recognize those it's just not to recognize it as an open space or the buildings individually but one needs to recognize it in a more holistic way of these things so these are the things that we need to recognize when we are doing a master plan and more so in a city like bangalore we should be kind of looking at the challenge of how they evolve we are not looking at freezing these heritage buildings or the heritage stock that we have but we should allow them to grow so there are buildings which can be allowed to take up a different use so that economically they can be sustainable that kind of model should be allowed so these policies if they can address what changes can be allowed how much can be changed which of these buildings that would be good that can be done through a system of grading which is right now missing in the rfp so grading of the heritage buildings which can also help in saying that which buildings are allowed to change to certain extent while which buildings should remain uh, as they are and maybe some repairs and re restorations are possible so the higher grade buildings you can allow for those things so grading would be a very important exercise the other main thing that we have to really see are like if we take bangalore's heritage uh, i would really see it as a lot of public buildings that are there and then you have a lot of private buildings so while public buildings it's a government's responsibility anyway to protect them you really don't need them to be mentioned in the master plan but since they recognize it's good and it's their responsibility so that we don't have to do a fire fighting exercise every time like when it came up to balagruis demolition and so on 
But when it comes to private buildings, we really have an issue because of the economic values that the places have. And a lot of these buildings are getting demolished for that purpose. Can we find ways in which these buildings can be saved or the owners can be compensated? Now, world over, there are many schemes which are available. So I would suggest that these schemes be studied, be it the TDR, be it repair fund that's given, be it the restoration uh, matching grant that can be given to these buildings. It would be good to encourage these kind of incentivizing the private owners so that they are encouraged to save the building, make the changes as per your lifestyle. The policy should allow for that. But then you still retain those things which add value and character to a city. So that is something which uh, the RMP should address, incentivizing this place. And lastly, I would uh, look at Bangalore as an evolving city. It's not that a city that's frozen in time. It's we have we are seeing it as 480 years of city's history within its built character. So it should be a little more dynamic. I mean, it's that we allow for kind of spaces where people have their activities, where people come out, people meet, the lifestyle is increased, the activities are increased. You have uh, cultural spaces of the city, like around the town what you have the Kalakshetra and so on. So these kind of cultural activities should be encouraged more. Uh, space should be provided for festivals that happen, that used to happen and continue to happen in the city. They should be encouraged more. So the kind of the way the streets are developed also should be blending with the activities that happen maybe once in a year and so on. So that's how I think we should be approaching because each area will have its own little activities and bad social, uh, activity patterns which will happen because of the communities which are staying there. And that needs to be recognized as we are preparing the master plan. Thank you so much. Was that